The story starts in a classroom full of delinquents, and Eugene thinks he is unlucky to be a part of this class and decides to remain quiet so he does not draw any attention. Colton spits at Zealot and starts talking about Grey Yone that he looks like a girl, and wants to check whether he is a girl or a boy. When he tried to grab Grey Yone, he punched him in the face and beat the shit out of him in front of the whole class, and warns him not to make a scene in his class ever again. Meanwhile, Ben Park from Class 8 tells Alex who is an enemy of Colton that how he got beaten up by Grey from Class 5. He immediately goes to see him and thinks he looks like a sheik but other students tell him the way he beats the devil out of Colton after tying him up. Gerard Jin also comes there and Ben makes fun of him that he also got curious to see Grey but he backfires on them saying that they look good together. The four of them are going to come together soon but until then a lot has to happen. Colton tells his friends about Grey and they stop him while he was going home and start making fun of him. When Colton's friend tries to hit Grey, he dodges his attack and pulls him down, chucking dirt in the eyes of the other guy. He stabs him in the face with a phone. He then hits Colton with a belt because he warned him not to create a scene again. As he leaves, Gerard walks in and tells them to stop crying because it's embarrassing. He knew that Colton will create a scene so he got worried and followed him. The next day, when Grey was sitting beside Eugene, Philip Kim comes and asks him to apologize for beating up his cousin Royce who is Colton's friend. Grey refuses to apologize by saying he does not care who he is while Ben tells Philip to leave quietly because it's not his class and drags him out of the class. Philip felt embarrassed in front of everyone because of Ben, and now he wants to avenge him, so he calls Jimmy from Yusun High School and tells him that Ben is scheming to crush him. This news makes him furious, and he asks Philip what kind of nonsense he is talking about. Jimmy furiously tells Philip that he is going to destroy Ben with his hand as he has an old enmity with him. Jimmy loses his control and tells Jack to gather the boys and drag Ben over here tomorrow. During the class, Eugene while looking towards Gray, starts wondering how a skinny boy like him can fight so well. Eventually, Gray asks him if he has something to say, so he in a state of panic starts telling him that it's dangerous to commute through the underpass due to some recent state of events. Gray then leaves because he has to use the washroom and there a guy pushes him while he was washing his hands but he ignores it and comes back. After coming back, he notices a slap mark on Eugene's neck and can imagine what could have happened when he was gone but he ignores it. Meanwhile, Ben asks his friend to join him for a game of pool, and Philip informs Jimmy that they are heading toward the pool hall beside the underpass. On the other hand, Gray knows that the bullies are trying to test his patience so tries not to lose control. While Ben and Alex are playing pool games, Jimmy and his boys are on their way toward the underpass to beat them. They reach the location and started waiting for Ben. After the class dismisses, Gray starts walking towards his home and reaches the underpass where Jimmy and his boys are waiting for Ben. He hears them talking about Ben and decides to change his route to avoid any unnecessary conflict, but one of Jimmy's boys calls him and decides to toy with him until Ben arrives. This makes Gray furious and he smashes a brick on his head. When Ben and Alex hear the smashing sound, they look outside the window and Ben runs to help Gray because it is an opportunity for him to beat Jimmy and he also calls Alex with him. When Jimmy is about to hit Gray, suddenly, Gerard appears and kicks him in the gut. He says hi to Gray by taking his name and asks him does he have any idea how to tackle all of them, which makes Gray wonder how Gerard knows his name. While they were thinking about dealing with them, Ben and Alex reaches there to help them. This was an unfamiliar experience for Gray as he has always fought alone. Ben tells Jack that Jimmy should have come himself instead of sending his guys to bring him if he wants to talk to him. After listening to this, Jack loses his control, punches Alex, and starts fighting with them. After beating them badly, Gerard, Ben, and Alex went back to the pool hall while Gray left them saying that he has other things to do. He was late for his extra class so the teacher warns him for the next time and gives a 10 minutes break to the class. While Hugo is talking about the fight between Yusun Hai and Yoon Jang with his friend in the class, a girl stops them from talking about this kind of thing. On the other hand, Jack told Jimmy about what happened with them and one of them thinks that maybe Philip is sending information on both sides, but Jimmy was not sure about this. Jimmy humiliates Helmet for getting destroyed by a no-name but Helmet thinks that Jimmy is responsible for all of this so he decides to report all of this to Donald Na. Jimmy thinks that he made a rash decision at that moment which lead to the worst outcome and he should have done this himself. He knows that all his opponents are waiting for a chance to nag him so he has to make a move first and surpass Ben and also the one who has beaten Helmet. 
After the class is dismissed, Hugo notices Gray wearing Yun Jang Hai's uniform and forcefully try to borrow his notes but Gray says it's fine and leaves the class. Suddenly, a student notices him and remembers that he was admitted to an elite school science high and how he ended up in an infamous school like Yun Jang. The girl from the extra class was also traveling in the same bus as Gray, and she wants to get to know him. The next day, when Evan Yu offers Colton to team up against Gray, he agrees and then they went to Gray to pick a fight with him, and spits on his notebook. Gray takes out a tissue and starts wiping the notebook when Evan slaps him. This makes him mad. He shuts the book and started smashing their faces with it. Gray remembered the time he swore to never lose again and kept smashing Evan's face until it started bleeding. It was a shocking sight for the whole class how a person who looks like him can be this brutal. When he was wiping their blood off from the book, this scene burns one thing in every student's consciousness not to mess with Grey Yon ever. While Ben and Alex were discussing how Grey defeated his class and Jimmy seems quiet after his goons were defeated badly, Philip hears and yells that things have not turned out the way he planned. On the other hand, Jimmy plans to take revenge and tells Helmet to do the same thing as the one who made him look like this. All the students started discussing the way Grey fights, and this news quickly becomes a hot topic among Yoon Jang High students. While Helmet was talking on the phone about how he is going to find that Yoon Jang student, Hugo Yoon was listening to this. He tells him that there are a few Yoon Jang students in the cram school he goes to and offers him his help to which Helmet agrees. Helmet asks him to send the location of that cram school so he can show this as proof to Jimmy that he tried looking for that no name and tells Hugo to wait for his call. While searching for his notes, Gray remembers he let a guy borrow his book in the last class and asks him to return them. Hugo returns the notes which are in a bad condition but tells him to appreciate that all the pages are there at least. While the girl in the class thinks that they are taking advantage of Gray because he looks like a mild guy and she will not let this happen again. Hugo tells his friend that Helmet is looking for a guy from Yoon Jang who looks pale and has eyes like a python but he doesn't remember his name and it will be an interesting sight for them to watch when he finds that guy. While Gray was thinking that he is not going to repeat the mistakes of his past and will not indulge in such fights again, he hears Hugo saying that Helmet is here. He wonders if it could be the same guy he has beaten. Helmet started questioning some Yoon Jang students at the door when a boy asks him for the way, and Helmet starts beating him badly. While Helmet was beating that kid, someone calls his name from the back of the class and he turns back to see who dares to call him like this but he cannot see his face. When Gray starts walking towards him, the whole class including the girl thinks that he has gone mad. After seeing Gray walking towards him, Helmet's consciousness filled with the memories of that incident. Gray passes by Helmet and leaves the room while Hugo notices that Helmet is trembling and wonders why he didn't say anything to this guy. Eugene is happy with the peaceful atmosphere of the class and he closes the curtains when he sees Gray sleeping on his desk. When Gray wakes up, he tells him that they are on duty together next week and he can count on him if he couldn't come early, although Gray reminds him that he always comes earlier than him. Philip eagerly wants to take revenge on Ben but he decides to stay quiet because Jimmy will take care of that. At the same time, he cannot forget the way Gray refused to apologize to him and thinks about how he dared say this to me while Gray was passing by the window of his classroom. Gray's hair is dripping with juice while he is standing with a dustbin in his hand and when he looks up, it was a student of class 1 challenging him that he can kill him. Philip made his name by taking down weak targets and influencing people through his money, and that's how he became the leader of his group. Philip invites Teddy Jin and Chad Jang to a high society bar, and they were intimidated by the place. He then introduces them to his friends by saying that they are his friends from high school. They thought it would be cool for them to have a connection with Philip who was number one in middle school. Philip tells them that he is looking for a chance to take over Yoon Jang High but there are a few obstacles that are weighing on his mind. They offer him that they can take down these guys for him. The next day, while Gray was on throwing out the garbage, they saw him that he is the one Philip was talking about, who acts cool after taking down Colton, and then shakes the bottle and spills it on Gray's head. Gray remembers that he has seen Teddy earlier this semester in the cafeteria when Colton acted subservient in front of him but he was never interested in knowing their hierarchy. The bell rings and they leave telling him to wash up before going to the class while Gray gasps that this is going to continue. Gray enters the class all wet and asks Eugene what he knows about the guy from class 1 who has a bob cut and got into an argument with Colton in the cafeteria. Eugene tells him that he is Teddy Jin, an absolute maniac. Meanwhile, Philip is thinking that there is no need to delay anymore and now he can crush Ben and Gray by using Teddy as his lapdog. Then he starts calling Jimmy who is entering the pool club at that time while some guys are already present there playing a game. 
Jimmy was intentionally ignoring the phone when one of those guys tells him to either pick up the phone or shut it off. The guy then snatches his phone which makes him angry and he slaps him down while others kept watching shockingly. Jimmy mocks them that are they not going to help his friend but one of them remembers that he is Jimmy B from the delinquent union, and they pick up their friend and leave. Philip walking inside the pool club thinks he met Donald not too late back in middle school, and this cost him a lot of time in becoming number one because Yoon Jang is already full of mad guys. When he enters the pool club he asks Jimmy why he was not picking up his call to which he replies that he was busy dealing with his Yoon Jang fellows. While they were talking Alex along with his friends enters the club and he got scared to see Jimmy there because he could not forget how he got beaten up by him a year ago. He immediately decides to leave but Jimmy pulls from his hair and starts beating him ruthlessly. Alex remembers the last time things got out of control due to his anger and Ben got hurt because of him but this time he is going to handle things on his own. Jimmy kept beating and mocking him that why is he not hitting back the way he did with Jack a few days ago. While Jimmy was beating the hell out of Alex, Philip was enjoying the scene and Alex stopped his friends from helping him. Jimmy tells him that if he is taking in so that this should not escalate then he is thinking wrong because he is going to crush Ben after this. Jimmy smashes his face on the floor because he wants Ben to know what happened to him. While beating Alex, he receives a call from someone telling him that Donald Na is calling him. He shuts the phone saying, informs Jack and others about this and that he is also coming there. Then, he leaves Alex saying that the sky has saved him today and informs Ben that he will be coming for him. The next morning, Gray was on his duty to clean the class and was thinking of not getting tied up with Teddy but he was sure that he will not get off that easily without anything happening. Meanwhile, Eugene comes, Gray asks him to tell him more about Teddy and he tells him what kind of maniac he was in middle school. After the morning announcements, while heading back to their classrooms, Teddy starts bullying a boy and tells him to go and draw a big X on Gray's back. The boy gets scared and he knows if he doesn't get the job done, Teddy is going to kill him. When he fearfully draws an arrow on Gray's back, he turns back to hit him but his nose was already bleeding and he wonders what this kid is trying to do. Upon asking the kid tells him that he is from class 1 and Gray instantly gets that it's the same class as Teddy's. Gray lost his cool but when that boy tells him he had no other choice, Gray gets a flashback from the past and leaves him. Meanwhile, Ben is trying to contact Alex but he is not replying, so he asks the guy who went to the pool club with Alex yesterday. The boy lies to Ben because Alex told him not to tell anything to him. Teddy and Philip went to the bathroom and started beating the guy whom they forced to write on Gray's shirt. Alex was watching all of this and his anger was building up against them. Gray, while taking the bus home is looking at the cleaning products which Eugene gave him and thinks, the way Eugene is trying to help him is just like Steven on. Alex decides to ghost Ben until his face gets better because he knows how Ben will react after know what happened. The next day, the teacher scolds the students who were on cleaning duty because someone spilled the coke on the hallway floor. Teddy intentionally did this and while Gray was moping the coke, he went to his class and took his bag despite Eugene trying to stop him. Teddy then kicks the bag into the cleaning bucket while another boy is mopping the floor and he wonders whose bag is this. Gray looks at the bag all wet and asks the boy mopping there if is he the one who did this. The boy shakes his head and points towards Teddy that he is the one who did this. Teddy, with a smile on his face standing there, mocks Gray that what he is going to do about this and tells him to get up here. While Teddy was trying to incite Gray, Eugene realizes that all of this is another part of Philip's scheme. Gray's anger is piling up and he calculates that if he tries to punch him right now, this will be both a positional and psychological disadvantage for him. He is aware that Teddy is baiting for him so he should not get wrapped up in his plan. While Gray was leaving, Eugene apologized to him for his bag and he by taking his name says it was okay and he should visit the nurse because his face is bruised. This is the first time he called Eugene by his name and he remembers when he asked Gray why he is letting Teddy get away with all of this. He replied that he is not done studying ahead. It's raining outside and Eugene was going to the cafeteria when upon asking, Gray replies to bring coke for him. Teddy's bag is missing and his classmate tells him that a pretty boy from class 5 took his bag saying, you asked him to bring it. Teddy in a rage run towards class 5 and sees his bag getting drenched in rain outside the window while Gray is cleaning the board. Gray holds the bag up and with a witty smile on his face asks him that is he here for his bag. Teddy fears that Gray might drop his bag down so he tells Chad Jang to get down there and be ready to catch it. Gray is just a delusional kid who is doing all of this to please Kim and obsesses over superficial things, so he drops his bag. While Teddy runs to catch his bag, Gray drags a chair in his way, hits his face with a duster, and smashes the coke tin in his face asking don't likes coke. To beat a demon like Teddy Jin, he becomes crueler and beat him badly. 
he believes that for idiots who put too much trust in big names, he will get to their heads with those names and marks across on Teddy's back. All bringing back Teddy's bag, Chad got all wet in rain and thinks that Teddy is too much when goes crazy like this. When he sees Teddy like this he was shocked and wondered what happened there. The Teddy Jin, he knows was not the one to get defeated like this. The news that the Union's helmet got defeated by Grey Yon installed anxiety and fear in Teddy. Chan was already flustered by the scene when Grey tells him to pick Teddy up and get out of there. According to Grey, if his opponent is crazier like Teddy then it is more important for him to force them to the edge with the mere look of his eyes. Alex receives a call from Ben. This time he picks up and Ben starts getting mad at him for ghosting him. Alex tells him that something came up so he has to go somewhere, but he'll be at school next week and hangs up. Meanwhile, Gerard sitting beside Ben remembers the gossip he heard about Alex but ignores that he doesn't have time to care about anyone else's business. Teddy, while staging on his foot left the school without Chad's help. While heading towards his class, Chad was sure that Philip will ask him about what happened with Teddy, and he was wondering. He can't tell him he has not seen anything because he went to get the bag and decides to make something up. When he enters the class, Philip was already waiting for him with the video of Teddy Jin on his phone. After knowing what happened, he gets disappointed because he thought Jin can easily take care of Grey. He realizes Grey is not someone who will easily submit, so he decides to keep throwing pawns at him until he is outnumbered. His strategy is to continuously harass his enemy until they give up. On Monday, when Alex comes to school, Ben tells him that he wants to talk to him and this makes Alex curious. When Teddy enters the class, he sees Chad standing with Philip's group and realizes that they are trying to outside him because he lost to Gray. Meanwhile, Ben was waiting for Alex when he comes and gets shocked to see Gerard was also there. They tell him that they know about what Jimmy did to him and they heard it from a part-timer girl at the pool club. Ben knows that Alex hid all of this because he was worried about him but Ben tells him that Jimmy is biting and yanking at an old scar and he is waiting for him to come after him. Meanwhile, Gray is furiously running towards someone when Eugene decides to accompany him so that if they die, they die together. After school break, Jimmy and all his goons gathered outside Yoon Jang for Ben. Jimmy calls a boy and tells him to grab Ben to the incinerator and kept his wallet in case he tries to run away. Meanwhile, Chad sees Gerard while he was leaving for his part-time job and tells Jimmy that he's with Ben too. Jimmy was expecting him to accompany Ben, but now he tells him to follow them quietly while he has called Ben. Meanwhile, that boy runs towards the rooftop where Ben and Alex were talking and tells them that Jimmy is looking for Ben, and they also took Gerard with them. After hearing this, Ben and Alex rush toward them. While Jimmy was waiting, Philip arrives with a bag and tells him that it's the bag of the freak who beat up the helmet. Jimmy is thinking of finishing this problem today and expects Philip to pay him the remaining amount. Meanwhile, Chad messes with Gerard by pulling his hair, and this makes him lose his cool, and he kicks him in his stomach. This catches Jimmy's attention and Philip tells him, Gerard is famously called Hot Foot. Jimmy mocks his nickname and when in return Gerard tries to kick him, he blows him down with a strong punch. While Gerard is stunned by his strength, Ben and Alex show up and ask him if he is alright. Meanwhile, one of Jimmy's goons tells the other to take Gray's bag and block the exit because he might be coming for it. Ben realizes they are talking about Gray and asks Jimmy to keep him out of this. But Jimmy points up to him that he is in no condition to be worried about anyone else. When Gray and Eugene arrive, after seeing Yu Sun students Eugene realizes they are in for a historic gang up. Gray asks the Yu Sun student to hand over his bag but he pokes fun at him for his height. And in response to this, he strikes his head under his jaw and makes him fall back. The bag falls from his hand and Jimmy wonders whether a hero makes his appearance or something else. Meanwhile, Gray appears and Jimmy tells him he looks nothing as he expected. Ben asks Jimmy to focus on their matter and leave Gray alone. Jimmy replies he has to atone for what he has done to Helmet and now he also crushed his man's jaw. Jimmy throws his bag over the incinerator and was pissed over a lot of things, so he cannot let them go without beating them. Jack calls Alex out for behaving differently when he is around Ben and ridicules him that he cannot have a one-on-one -on -one fight with him. Then he punches him in the face and this makes Ben lose his cool, and he punches him back for hitting Alex. This stirs up trouble and Jimmy orders his goons to rip them apart. Eugene could not believe he is going to witness the biggest rivalry between Yu Sun's Jimmy and Yoon Jang's Ben Park. The fight begins, Jimmy dodges Ben's attack and hits him hard in the face. After last year's fight between them, Jimmy went all out getting into fights while Ben after getting physical therapy stayed away from trouble. This difference hit him harder than he anticipated. Meanwhile, Gray also started bashing his opponent. 
On the other hand, Philip is delighted because things are going as he planned. He knew that Gerard and Alex are fighting hard against you sun goons but they will lose in the end. For him, it is enough if Jimmy takes care of Ben. On the contrary, Gray was beating the hell out of his opponent with a trash can. Meanwhile, Jimmy was trashing Ben, when he gets a hold of him and strikes Jimmy down. Consequently, Jimmy's goons attack Ben to buy time for him to get up. Jimmy immediately got up, and when he was about to counterattack he feels a hand on his shoulder. It was Gray asking him for his bag. Jimmy thought he was trying to pull something goofy and told him to get it himself. Jimmy's fighting style mostly comprises landing hits which Gray easily dodged. He got stunned by what he has done to his men and lost his focus. After taking care of his goons, Ben attacks him and tells Gray that he'll snag his bag for him afterward. He tells him, he was a bit slower at the start but now he has warmed up. After a terrible exchange of punches, Ben knocks him down with a strong smack. After witnessing Jimmy's defeat, everyone was in a state of shock while it was a fascinating experience for Gray to witness someone win a fight for him. Alex and other Yusun have no choice but to accept Ben's undisputed victory. Meanwhile, Philip was devastated by this outcome. Afterward, Alex climbs onto the incinerator and passes the bag to Gray. Ben was feeling a little uncertain about today's victory, but according to Alex, it all depends on Jimmy and Yusun's reaction. To everyone's surprise, Eugene also shares his take on this that Jimmy is not going to make the fight bigger by telling this to Donald Na. He is an egoist person and he cannot risk humiliation by leaning on the union for the same issue as last year. Ben was amazed by his analyzing skills and just like Eugene analyzed, Jimmy was not going to risk his ego by telling all of this to Donald Na. But little did he know, Helmet was already on his way to inform Donald Na about the situation. He goes to Yoel High School, where Kingsley sends him to Donald's office. When Helmet enters the office, Donald Na was talking to Harper, who informs him that Jimmy got an independent commission from Philip to beat Yoon Jang but in reality, he got destroyed by them. He is aware of the way Jimmy is disregarding the established rules of the union. Meanwhile, the Helmet was terrified that he got the news before he told him. Donald wanted to clear things up with Jimmy and now he has a good reason to do this, so it's about time, he sets a good example. During Cram's class, everyone wondered how Helmet got terrified afterwards seeing Grey, and they realized that Grey is a dangerous guy so they made up White Mamba as a nickname for him. While leaving class, a clicking sound got his attention. This was the boy from his middle school who secretly took his picture because he took a bet with his class fellow that Grey is in his Cram school, and he did not believe him. While he was posting his picture on social media, Grey caught him off guard. He instantly recognizes him as Wesley son from Bioxin Middle School. All the memories from his past which were impossible to forget and which he don't want to remember started getting bone deep inside him. He dived into the memories of the past when he was a kid without any goal in his life. His only focus was the acquisition of knowledge, so he can fill the void inside his heart. His only focus was studying so he lacked behind in physical activities. He was a weak kid but through focus and comprehension. He gained an insight into reading situations. Stephen On, a student in his class got curious about him and asked him why he is always hell-bent on studying and memorizing books. He was going to lie to him when he tells him that he is not studying because of any clear goal he has and this makes Gray wonder if he knows him. He felt weird because his true feelings were found out. Stephen was a peculiar and honest guy who had a pure curiosity toward others. He tells Gray he can get the first position in the class if he wants to but Gray thinks he is just bluffing to get his attention. In the next monthly exam, he stood first and reminds Gray that he was not bluffing at that time. By making a victory sign, Gray thinks of him as a weirdo. Students used to discuss that Stephen never lost any academic competition and always donated prize money but in class, he stood mostly between 20th to 30th places. In a matter of time, Stephen and Gray became friends and started spending time together. Stephen wanted to apply for an experimental support program, but after being rejected by his homeroom teacher, Miss Lee signs that for him. After a few days, because of Stephen's perfect planning for his class, they got selected as the fist's beneficiary of the district's new innovative classroom project. Meanwhile, Gray asks Stephen why he is doing all of this to which he replies that. It gives him a sense of satisfaction to make others happy. The maturity and impartiality of Stephen filled the hole in Gray's heart. While the vice principal was scolding students for not paying their lunch dues, Stephen and Gray were also there. He then requested the homeroom teacher to use financial support and his prize money for class expenses and overdue lunch fees. The homeroom teacher had a certain antipathy for him and he saw his efforts as extra work for him. During lunchtime, Stephen suggests Gray sit with Bryso because he always used to sit alone 
and this was his first encounter with him. Bryce was a shy guy but he started putting continuous effort to hang out with them. Initially, Gray didn't care for him much but after a few days, they naturally got used to the change. As they started to hang out with him regularly, the so-called shy Bryce started to change as quickly as he adapted. Once Stephen was putting up a poster when Bryce started bad-mouthing him with Gray. For a moment, Gray felt unpleasant but he thought Bryce is saying this because of his deeply rooted inferiority complex. He got jealous of them. The girls admired them and he thought there is no big difference between them other than his glasses. While chilling at Stephen's home, Bryce made a taunt about his class ranking which he took as a joke in front of him. Stephen activated his study mode like he was playing a video game and took first rank in the next exam. After this, Bryce's ego got scared and his odd behavior seemingly increased. While he was bullying a kid, Stephen stops him and tells him to be kind. This was the time when Gray caught the stiff look on Bryce's face but he still failed to notice his deranged ego. After the class starts, Mr. Bang announces corporal punishment for the students who have not done their homework. Gray is unable to find his homework which he kept inside his desk. Meanwhile, Stephen hands him over his homework to protect him from the punishment and he doesn't care about his grades. On the contrary, Bryce envious of their friendship was the one who managed to purloin Gray's homework. He started hanging out with delinquents like Oswald Young by ditching Gray and Stephen. He took it as a chance for him to become a cool kid. One day, Gray was reading a self-defense book when Stephen in a playful way teased him that he cannot understand his vast fields of interest. Then they went to Gray's house for a revenge title match in Tekken and Stephen also had to take a shower because he was super sweaty from the basketball match. While taking shower, Stephen starts wondering, why Gray's parents are not around much. After playing and losing in the revenge match with Gray, Stephen decides to walk home for some exercise. After walking for a while, he sees Bryce hanging with those delinquents while Donnie is crying wounded. After seeing Donnie's condition, he asks them to be nice to their friends. Oswald tells him, he heard, that he has been bad-mouthing him. Stephen tries to explain that there must have been a misunderstanding, but Bryce slanders him for doing so. When Stephen tries asserting himself, Oswald punches him and warns him to stop pretending like he did nothing. When Stephen asks Bryce why he did this to him, Oswald started torturing him that he is talking to him. This is the only way Bryce can step over Stephen. His cruel nature made him oblivious to how childish his actions were. After drubbing Stephen, while they were leaving, Bryce looks at him with a taunting look of mockery. This was the most mortifying thing for Stephen. The next day, Gray got horrified after seeing Stephen's face and asks him what happened. Stephen advises him to stay put if anything happens in the class because he doesn't want him to get roped into this. During the class, a kid reminds Gray about the deadline for the upcoming Olympiad and that his name is not written on the registration list. He remembers that he submitted the form, so he decides to visit the teacher's office. While he was leaving, Oswald and his sidekicks enter the class and start messing with Stephen. Oswald slaps him in the face. Meanwhile, the sound of the slap makes Gray stop in the hallway. Meanwhile, Oswald taunts Stephen to say the things in front of him, which he said behind his back. Bryce's jealousy of Stephen turned into contempt, and he did not back away from lying about him to Oswald. Stephen, without getting a chance to prove himself, became an enemy of Oswald and his gang. Bryce also took his part in beating him. After getting his name registered for Olympiad, Gray returned to an uncanny silence in the class, where Stephen was not present. From that day, Stephen decided to distance himself from Gray to protect him from becoming Gang's target. This was immensely painful for Gray to see Stephen slowly falling into a darker place. Oswald pitches a deal to Stephen that if he gets the last position in the upcoming exam, he will call it to quit on all this crap. He then hits him in the stomach and tells him to leave. While he was leaving, Oswald checks his phone and starts giggling, and asks Bryce, what is this? To which he replies that he is just having some fun. The next day, when Gray enters the class, everyone starts laughing which makes him uncomfortable. While he was wondering why everyone is laughing, Jeremy secretly calls him to the washroom and shows him his phone. He tells him that Bryce made a class group and initiated gossip by sharing Stephen and Gray's picture. He was shocked to see the majority of their classmates ridiculing comments about them. Everyone was scared that if they don't play along with them, they can also become the target. During the class, the homeroom teacher informs that the students participating in the Olympiad tomorrow will head towards the location after the first period. After the class, Gray runs after Stephen to talk with him but he tells him that by doing this he can also become Oswald's target. Gray doesn't care about what everyone is saying about them but Stephen decides to bring everyone's attention towards him so they don't get a chance to look at Gray and leaves after handing the umbrella to Gray. The next day, during the first lecture, Mr. Bang brings their grades and calls Stephen to the front. 
while Bryce and Oswald were expecting his failure because he cannot bear any more beating. The teacher shockingly announces that he stood first in the whole school. Everyone was wondering will Oswald let him go with this, while it requires a hero to recognize a hero. And at that moment chills surged through Gary's body. While heading towards the Olympiad location, Gray remembers the last look in Steven's eyes, telling him to do his best. On the other hand, Oswald understood what Steven wants and tells him to come to the rooftop. Meanwhile, Gray was doing his best to win just like Steven. After the competition, he tries to call him but he doesn't pick up. He received 13 texts from Jeremy and at that time, he felt inexplicable feelings of worry swirling inside him while he opened the messages. Meanwhile, a boy informs Mr. Bang, Steven fell from the roof. Everyone was gathered at the scene while an ambulance came and took Steven to the hospital. Meanwhile, Oswald and Bryce were discussing that, as long as their stories are going to match, this should not be a problem for them. After reaching the hospital, Gray gets to know that, Steven sustained severe brain damage and he is going to spend the rest of his life on life support. He stood there for an hour with a blank face and left quite calmly. He remembered, the time he saw light in Steven and wondered if he also saw a light in him or if he was lonely in his world. His eyes got filled with this guilt, and he started crying. Later on, Oswald's dad, the city representative, visits the principal office and asks them to put this matter aside without making it a big issue for the school. During class, Mr. Bang tells the students to focus on their studies while Gray locked himself in the room and stopped going to school. The Olympiad results came and he won the grand prize. Miss Lee felt bad and started to question her profession as she cannot do anything for him. After some days, Gray went to school and shocked everyone. They thought it'll be difficult for him to get into science high school because his attendance is on the edge. Meanwhile, Gray holding his certificate was thinking about Stephen when Oswald shows up and jokes about Stephen's condition while Gray remains quiet. When the boys were preparing for soccer, Gray asks Jeremy to switch his duty with him as he is not feeling well. He was scheming a trick that he saw on TV. While the students are warming up, they smell something odd and point to Oswald that it's coming from him. Oswald went to change and wondered why his clothes are stinking, and they also seem tight to him. While Oswald was trying to take off the shirt, Gray appears behind him and pins his shirt and shorts together with the giant safety pin which Steven gave him. He gets on the table while thinking how hard he trained and worked on his body to reach the minimum requirements to pull off this moment. He then kicks Oswald's face while he was stuck in the shirt. Oswald was unable to see him and he kept beating his face. When Oswald tries to pull off his shirt, the safety pin breaks but Gray tucks it with the desk hook and starts bashing him with a chair. He then takes Oswald's phone and texts his friend to come to the class. After receiving the text from Oswald, his friend immediately went to the class where Gray was waiting for him with a trap. He tripped himself with the rope while getting inside and got drubbed by Gray with the same skipping rope. Meanwhile, the students returning after the match stood shockingly at the door. Bryce also runs towards the door to see what is happening there and sees Gray telling him that he was waiting for him. Everyone was shocked to see what Gray did to Oswald and his friend while Bryce froze at the spot after seeing this unexpected situation. Gray started battering him because he was the most unforgivable one for him. While smacking his face he kept questioning why he did all of this to Steven until his hands were covered red with his blood. Although a boy tries to stop him that is going to kill Bryce, he tells him to take his hand off and that they should have stopped it earlier when Oswald was doing all of that to Steven. He tells them to stay away unless they want to join them and begin pummeling Bryce again. He then takes out the tape which Steven used for putting posters, tapes them together, and starts kicking them in rage. He can no longer see Steven smile because of these scumbags. Meanwhile, the vice principal appears there and is left horrified to see Oswald and his gang beaten to a pulp while Gray was standing there with his hands and clothes covered in blood. This issue became a big problem for the school's higher authority, and they scolded Mr. Bang for not taking care of the kids. While they were discussing how they are going to deal with this situation, Gray shows them their true faces by revealing their greedy deeds and left there. Later on, Gray got to know that Stephen was moved to another hospital because his parents were hurt and scared. While leaving the hospital he gets a call from Miss Lee. At that time, she was the only one who stood by Gray and helped him to get through that rough patch. Most of the schools refused to admit him because of the nature of his case and the pressure from Oswald's dad but he got admission to Yoon Jang because of Miss Lee. He also wanted to move away from that neighborhood because it felt liberating to him. Back to the present, Gray got his picture deleted from Wesley's phone, makes him apologize by smacking his face, and tells him to stay out of his sight at the academy or he might kill him. The next day, while Alex and Gerard were sitting, Ben suddenly tells them that he is going to visit class 5 and they wondered what's wrong with him. 
then visits Gray's class and tells them. It's by the time that they should get together and share some thoughts to better their future. For this, he offers them a friendly pool competition at the underpass. He thought that Gray might refuse like the last time but he agrees and Ben was pleased to hear this. He also offers Eugene to accompany them. Eugene notices that after that day, Gray is trying to open up a little and the reason was Miss Lee's saying that he should not forget that there are people who care and worry for him. After school, they went to the pool club. Ben wanted to order Chinese but Alex wanted to eat Tidiokbaki so they asked Gray. Gray also goes with Tidiokbaki because he's had enough Chinese food with Steven. Ben send Alex and Gerard to bring the Tidiokbaki because they don't deliver there. While they were bringing the food, Alex suddenly starts behaving oddly and tells Gerard to keep his head straight and just go from there. Gerard asks him why he has turned pale to which he tells him that he saw the union members sitting across the road, along with Donald Na. When Alex and Gerard came back, they told Ben that they saw Donald Na on the road. Eugene freaks out and Ben says that he might have made this appearance because of Jimmy's case. Ben asks Eugene what's his take on this, and he tells them that Donald Na goes from school to school on the last day of every month for an accounting conference and today is the last day of the month, and he might visit Hyung Shin. From Hyung Shin. Ben instantly remembers Miles Ju who was excommunicated by the Union. Meanwhile, Forrest Lee, the new number one of Hyungshin presents himself in front of Donald Na. Donald Na thought that Miles might have created a scene after being removed from the Union so he came to check things out. Forrest felt phased in front of Donald Na. He remembers the first time he set foot on the street of Young Yunpo, which was nothing short of a revolution. He controlled people with his charisma and had a great business mind. He stimulated and satisfied basic human needs and perfectly controlled everyone around him. After middle school, he also destroyed the largest Yongdungpo High School Union Manual and made a more powerful union for himself and took over Yongyunpo. Donald Na orders Forrest to call a union assembly because they will have to teach Jimmy a lesson this time. He also questions Forrest for not taking action against Jimmy by himself in advance. He tells him to deal with the union flocking up in Yunjang which crushed Jimmy because it would look pathetic for them as both the schools are close to each other. Forrest remembers that even Miles Ju was passive over crushing Yun Jang. They have seen Ben going rampage during last year's fight. Miles always hated Philip for being an imposter and a weakling without his money. Forrest thought it would have been easy for Miles to take money from Philip and deal with Yun Jang than Jimmy, but now he has to deal with it. Forrest orders his boys to crush Yoon Jang wherever they see them and tells Philip to send him a picture of his boys so they don't say anything to them. Meanwhile, Gray leaves for his cram class and forgets his phone there. Eugene saw his phone and goes after Gray to return it to him. While Eugene was trying to figure out the path, Forrest's guys saw him and started beating him. When he was going to punch Eugene again, he gets a strong kick. This is Teddy, who came to rescue Eugene and tells him to get up because he cannot let him get beaten up in Yoon Jang's uniform. They saw the picture Philip sent them and told them to especially beat Teddy wherever they see him. Teddy knows that Philip makes things clear when he cuts out people so he decides to act on his own. Suddenly, Gray appears and asks Eugene what happened to him. After knowing that Teddy was trying to help Eugene, Gray then tells Eugene to go with him. While they were leaving, Haiyang Shin boys mock them for leaving and tell them to come back and that they will deal with them in five minutes. After hearing this Teddy hits one of them in the temple and knocks him out while Gray beats the other one. After beating them, Teddy left on his way while Eugene and Gray went on their way and Gray also took back his phone from Eugene. Hyung Shin's Yoon Jang hunting mostly resulted in Yoon Jang's losses with a few expectations. Forrest knows that there is no need to charge in with an entourage like Jimmy, so he decides to attack them when they are not together. When Gray was heading towards Cram's class, Eugene asks him to teach him fighting because he is the weakest among them and it might look odd to others when he hangs around with them. Gray replies that he should join an academy and ask for help in his studies rather than wasting time on this crap. Another time, in Hyung Shin, two boys were fighting when Forrest arrives there and tell them to keep fighting until one of them loses and he will reward the loser with 10 slaps. After hearing this, they started pummeling each other. At the same time, boys and Yoon Jang are discussing how Hyung Shin how they are beating them wherever they see them, as a warning for Ben Park. Meanwhile, Alex, Gerard, and Ben knew things are going to escalate but now it has turned into a frustrating situation for Ben because others are getting attacked because of him. Ben wants to attack them immediately, but Alex suggests he estimate their numbers first and call Eugene and Gray because they are also in it. Back to Hyung Shin. Forrest was beating the loser of the fight when his boys arrived with their faces smashed and reported that Teddy and White Mamba from Yoon Jang did this to him. 
They recall how one of them got beaten by Gray with a bag and identifies him as a white man but because he is famous for tying people up before beating them. Forrest thought, doesn't have to worry about anyone outside Ben's group but he also has to catch the so-called white mamba. While in new son, Jimmy and Jack were sitting in the cafe when Jimmy receives a text from Donald Naw that he wants to see him at the assembly. When he was thinking that he might end up like Miles Jew, a guy came there and started mocking him for his situation. Jimmy hits him hard in the face and warns him to stop babbling and leaves, saying it's not over between him and Ben Park yet. Back to Yoon Jang's rooftop, Eugene tells them, Gray refused to come because he doesn't do rooftops. He also tells them about yesterday's incident and how Teddy helped them. Ben was amazed that Gray got a talent for forming parties and he got Teddy on his side. Meanwhile, Gray was studying in the class and Colton was wondering how is he able to focus on his studies when Yoon Jang is going to get crushed anytime soon. Later on, Forrest orders Robin Ha, a street fight addict, to go ahead and deal with Ben. On the other hand, Eugene explains to everyone that the union consists of five schools. Dihyun, Ganghak, Hyungshin, and Yu Sun with Yoael at the center. They already knew about Jimmy and Donald Na so he skips them and moves on to Hyungshin's forest who became number one after the excommunication of Miles Ju and there were rumors that he planned his excommunication. Next is Wolf Kim of Ganghak, famous as Dark Horse. He is overly cruel and violent and is the newest member of the union. The last one from Dihyun High School is known as the strongest in the union, aside from Donald Na. He reads comic books, likes to rap, is loyal, and doesn't pick on others. Eugene also tells them that he heard Haeyoung Shin's talking about White Mamba from Yoon Jang while Ben and Gerard in a split second found out that they were talking about Grey. While in Dihyun, Dean Kwon, number two of the school tells Jake Jai, number one of the school, to slow down while reading the comic and he replies that he always stays a page ahead of everything from everyone. In Hyung Shin, Forrest gets mad because no one is in charge of the Noryong Jin area after they lost there to Grey. He, therefore, decides to use Helmet and tells him they have an important job of handling the Noryong Jin area for him. Helmet thought he is going to be fine as long as he can avoid Grey and agrees to the job thinking that he is an insider for the union. In Yoon Jang, Philip tells Teddy that he heard about what he did in Noryong Jin and mocks him to carry on the entertainment. While using the toilet, Alex was checking out the ranking list of Yoong Yoon Po. He saw White Mambo on the list and wondered who that person is. Suddenly, he hears someone talking about Ben being the reason for what is happening and none of this would have happened if he had joined the union. He comes out and sees Colton talking behind their back and takes a jibe at him for doing so. While he was leaving, Colton offends him by saying that he is nothing without Ben and flicks his cigarette on his neck. This makes his neck burn slightly and he looks back at Colton while laughing wickedly. Colton gets offended by his laughing and punches him but Alex kept laughing and when Colton tried to hit him again, he defended himself and started thumbing him. Meanwhile, Ben was wondering why Alex is taking so long in the bathroom when the bell rang and they leave for their respective classes. Ben gets mad after seeing Alex already sitting in the classroom. When he asks Alex what happened to his face, he refused to tell him. Then a boy tells Ben about what happened in the bathroom and he gets mad at Colton and heads toward his class to beat him. After seeing Colton's condition, Ben felt relieved and started laughing. On the other hand, Forrest skies while punishing some students, let three of them leave because they were wearing the uniforms made by K Cooperation. This uniform works as a shield from the union, for the students who wear it. Donald Na receives commissions from KHG Industries because he increased their market shares from 10% to 80%, and this is a big deal for Mr. Kang the head of the KHG group. Meanwhile, Eugene also joins the Hero Cram School in Noryong Jin after Gray's advice. After getting done with the registration process, Eugene realizes that the Cram School is very different from Yoon Jang because everyone is studying hard there. Suddenly he feels someone is looking at him for a while and is coming towards him. He hears his name and when he turns he gets surprised that it's Rowan, his middle school friend. Rowan tells him that after returning to Korea, he has decided to go to Yoon Jang. Rowan tells Eugene that he can always give him a word whenever he needs help or want to talk about something. While Jake is feeling devastated at the death of his favorite comic book character, Dean Quan thinks he is a lunatic. Meanwhile, Jake receives a call from Kingsley Khan, who tells him that he is there to meet him. Kingsley informs him that Donald now wants him to attend the upcoming assembly. Jake replies that he will go, after all, it'll be nice to see Jimmy and Forrest for the first time. Gray while washing his hands remembers what Eugene said about Hyung Shin, and that they will all go for Ben now. Philip comes there with his friend while talking about the assembly. 
Grey glares at Philip, which makes him comment that if he keeps glaring at people with these snake eyes, one day he'll get them gouged out. Grey warns him to stop messing behind a man's bag and trying to gouge his eyes right there. Suddenly, the bell rings, and Philip tells that he got saved by the bell but Grey while saying that he's not sure whom the bell saved leaves there. Eugene tells Grey about him joining the cram class and Grey gives him his notes. After this Eugene also informs him about the rumors that Yu Sun's been calling him White Mamba. During the first cram class, Eugene finds it difficult to focus although it's the basic class. After the class ends, Eugene and Rowan decide to go home together and Eugene asks Grey to come with them but he refuses because he still has another class left. On their way home, Eugene sees Helmet and tells Rowan to move quietly. After going a little further, Rowan tells Eugene that he forgot his wallet on the desk and is going back to get it. While heading back, Helmet stops him and asks, he passed by with Eugene, is he from Yunjiang too? While Helmet is about to beat him, he blows his face with his elbow. Helmet's face starts bleeding and Rowan runs back to the cram school to get his wallet. Meanwhile, Teddy is heading home in the heavy rain and a kitten catches his attention. He starts talking that its cardboard house is not going to stand this heavy rain and decides to take it home. When he gets up he saw Eugene there and felt embarrassed that he saw him talking to a cat like an idiot. Eugene tells him that he bought some things for the cat but he takes them from him and leaves. The next day, after seeing Ben and Alex having fun with Gerard, Eugene feels that they are not affected by the tense atmosphere of the school because they have not been attacked by the Hyung Shin directly. Suddenly, Teddy crosses his way and tells him he named the kitten Ko and it's fine. Eugene felt relieved for Ko and tells him his aunt runs a vet clinic and he can take Ko there if he ever gets sick. While Colton was hanging around with his friend, Forrest stops them from hanging around in Hyung Shin territory and punches his friend in the face. Colton got scared and tried running away from there, but Grape stops him and punches him down. After beating them badly they took their pictures and left. After beating them, while leaving, Forrest asks Grape to call Helmet. After knowing Helmet's failure, Forrest calls him and inquires about Yoon Jang's white mamba because he already knows about Ben. Gerard, and Alex. Helmet tells him that Grey goes to a cram school, and they can camp out there and hunt him because there is only one alleyway. Forrest likes this idea, gives each of his gang members four, or five guys, and tells them to stand by their locations and execute the plan accordingly. Meanwhile, Eugene after cleaning the teacher's office, decides to head toward the cram school. He wanted to go earlier with Grey. But Gray had a makeup class so he left earlier than him. While Eugene was leaving, Alex thought he was heading home and offers to accompany him as he also lives in single. Suddenly Teddy appears there and asks Eugene about his aunt's vet because Ko is sick. As Eugene was going to the cram school, Alex tells Teddy that he knows the vet clinic and they can go together. On the other hand, Ben and Gerard also spilt their ways. Forrest's guys immediately inform him that Ben and his friends have split their ways. Forrest then texts all his teams to start picking them, starting now. While heading to the vet clinic, Alex wonders whether Eugene is good at making friends or Teddy has gone mad. Eugene's aunt welcomes them into the clinic and after examining Ko, tells them that Ko has to stay there for two to three days. After leaving Ko at the clinic they went on their separate ways and Teddy felt some guys going after Alex. After the cram classes, while Eugene and Gray were leaving, Rowan gifts them canned drinks and he spills it on his face while opening it. Gray tells him to clean his face and gives him his napkin to wipe his face which he returns to him. Meanwhile, Grape with his boys blocks Yoon Jang's students way from both sides and tells everyone that he is on a snake hunt. He tells his guy to call Team 3 who lost in Noryang Jin and have them pick out White Mamba but they were on the search team. So he decides to find Grey by picking one by one from all of them or the White Mamba could show himself. Meanwhile, Gerard gets to know that some guys are following him and after knowing, they are from Hyung Shin. He thinks, this is too much. One of them hits Gerard and in return, Gerard instantly kicks him down for hitting out of nowhere. After one of them got kicked down by Gerard, the remaining three simultaneously attacked him. Meanwhile, the other group while following Ben, hits him with a soda can. Ben recognizes that they are from Hyung Shin and asks them why Forrest has not come himself. To which Robin replies that Forrest has decided to beat his minion to death until Ben shows up. On the other hand, Forrest can find Alex and mocked him that Ben will not be able to appear and save him like always, because he has sent Robin to crush him. Simultaneously, Grape's guy starts beating the Yoon Jang students one by one to find Grey. 
Eugene tells Gray that he has sent a message to the boys group but he got noticed while whispering and gets called to the front. Eugene decided to sacrifice himself to get some time for Gray so that someone from the boys group might come for their help after seeing his text. When he started beating Eugene, Gray takes off his belt and moves toward them and hit his face with the belt and tells them he is the one they are looking for. Meanwhile, one of Forrest's guys started beating Alex and he thought he'll not be able to fight all of them alone. Suddenly, Teddy appears there and hits back the guy who was hitting Alex and tells him to run for their lives. Forrest sends his guys after them but they succeed in hiding themselves in a dark, narrow alley. Unfortunately, Teddy's phone started ringing, and they got noticed by the Hyung Shin goons. Alex tells Teddy to keep hiding there until he gets their attention toward him. While Alex diverted their attention, Teddy got worried for him and felt guilty. He came out wondering if things have quieted down but Forrest was standing behind him and caught him by his neck. Alex stopped after knowing that Teddy got caught and Forrest challenges him to leave Teddy here and run until he beats him to death but Teddy tells him to save himself and leave. On the contrary, after seeing Gray's performance, the boys that were conflicted by the rumors got their conflicts amplified about him. Rowan also started bragging about Gray's strength and himself, that he is the one who made Helmet spew blood a few days ago in Noryong Jin. Meanwhile, Grape's guy makes everyone else leave from there. Grape asks Rowan if he is sure they'll be able to beat him and his guys with these numbers. Rowan kept bragging about his strength, that the first one who attacks them is going to die. He thought by doing this, he is gaining time for some help to arrive, as Eugene has texted in his group. While Grape analyzes that he can easily cross out Eugene as a non-threat but Gray could be a little dangerous though. About Rowan, he remembers what Helmet told him about his elbow hit, and he got to know that he is a one-trick pony and holds his elbow tightly while Rowan tries to hit him. On the contrary, Ben knocked two of Robin's guys with a single blow, and they got startled by his strength. He also punched the other two guys down in no time, leaving Robin for the end. Robin thought that Ben has a tendency to raise his upper body, so his weak point is his midsection, and tries to punch him there. Ben holds his punch fiercely while telling him that he doesn't like wasting time and now he is going to get him whooped. Ben punched Robin's face so hard that he felt like he had never taken a punch like that before and his jaw almost broke. Suddenly one of the guys gets up from behind Ben and kicks him from the back to make him lose his balance so that Robin can smash his face from the front. But Ben moves his head in front of his punch and Robin felt like his hand got cracked. Ben then immediately knocks the one behind him with his elbow. Meanwhile, Gerard also kicked all his opponents down one by one. But he also remembers that this place reminds him of the old times and he has a flashback of him when he used to have his hair styled back. Suddenly, one of the boys' phones rang and Gerard checks that Alex and Gray got located. He instantly checks Eugene's text on his phone and tries to call them, but no one picks up, so he first runs toward Ben because it's the closest location. Meanwhile, Robin tells Ben that he might beat him up but he will not be able to save his friends, who are getting beaten in different locations. Suddenly Gerard makes an appearance by kicking Robin's face and tells Ben to go to single for Alex and he is heading towards Gray. Meanwhile, Grape while holding Rowan's elbow, tries to kick him but he defends himself. Grape gets mad and orders his guys to start beating Gray. However, Gray notices the garbage bags lying there, and when one of the guys moves forward to punch him, he trashes his head with that trash bag. After hitting a guy with his belt wrapped over his hand, he covers the other's head with the shopper. When one of the goons hits Eugene, Rowan punches that guy back and checks if Eugene is alright, but he got punched by Grape for doing so. Then, Eugene tried to hit Grape but failed miserably and got punched by him in return. Grape tells the guys to quickly wrap things up. However, they were all pissed by seeing Gray fight so brutally with different objects and Gray tells them to admit that they are scared of him. While Gray is trying to deal with them, he wonders if he had anyone from their boys group by his side, things would have been easier. Then he starts bashing them while Grape is beating Rowan for protecting Eugene. When one of the guys mocks Gray that his game is over, Gerard shows up and they got shocked to see him there. At that moment, after seeing Gerard, Gray realizes the word friend he had hidden in his heart after those days with Steven. Gerard asks Gray if he is alright, and more shocked than the Hyung Shin mob was Rowan. After seeing Dewey Middle School's Mad Hound Gerard Jin there, Grape felt shocked after realizing that Scorpion got wrecked that fast by Gerard but he still fought. They can still clear this situation. He 
He knew Gerard was panting after sprinting here and order his boys to not let him recover and beat him first. On the other hand, Forrest lured Alex in by using Teddy and ordered his goons to beat them up. While Alex and Teddy were beating their opponents, Forrest got mad and started thumbing at Alex. He told his boys to hold Alex while he beat the hell out of him but Teddy abruptly kicks Forrest in the face to save Alex from his beating. While they were standing there wondering what they are going to do now, Forrest became furious and was about to hit them when, suddenly, Ben appears there and hold Forrest's ear with a strong grip and started squeezing it while asking if he is the one who did this to Alex. Forrest tells his gang to beat them up, but things have changed after Ben's arrival and he starts bashing them after coming there. Forrest punches Ben from behind and thought he can get Ben down by gripping his neck but Ben holds his fist so tight that he lost his grip and his hand started trembling. Ben twists his arm around and picks him up from behind his waist. Everyone was shocked that Forrest got lifted by him with one hand only and then he throws him against the iron fence. Ben started bashing Forrest, the fight turned into an assault, and the rest of Hyung Shin froze at this horrific sight. Ben's hits felt like an avalanche of giant boulders to Forrest Lee. Alex asks Teddy to pick him up because his body was brutally hurt, and tells Ben to stop while he was pummeling Forrest. After asking Alex if he is fine, Ben ends the war there. Simultaneously, Rowan realizes that Gerard is exhausted and they have an advantage over them due to their number. Meanwhile, Gray's belt breaks while he was beating the goons, so he folds the tin Rowan gave him in his napkin to use as a weapon and tells them, he is not over yet. Rowan thinks that he has to go along with Gray if he wants to win, so he decides to get his head up and tells Gray to go first and he'll finish them off behind him. Gray starts bashing their faces one by one with the kin along with Rowan blowing their faces. Meanwhile, Gerard tried to kick Grape but he had no strength left and Grape did not get hurt. Instead, he hits him back with a strong kick. Gerard never felt this weak. He thought maybe it is because he smoke a lot and he should quit it. Grape started kicking him from all directions while Gerard gathered his strength and thumps him down with a single shot. Grape blacked out with the kick and fall back in front of his associates. Gerard felt exhausted after all of this and Grape's goons taking advantage of the situation hold Gerard back while he gets up. Grape after getting conscious, was about to punch Gerard when Gray hits him with the tool he made with the can. Grape passes out with this hit, and Gray warns them to get out of there if they don't want more bloodshed. Ben calls Gerard and inquires about their situation, to which replies that they got them trashed badly. Ben also tells him that they shamed Forrest along with his gang and tells him to meet up halfway. While Ben and Alex were leaving, Ben thanks Teddy for helping Alex while he was not there. Teddy is an avid admirer of power and he stared admiring Ben's strength in his heart when Ben turns back and offers him to hang out with them for a while. After they all gathered, Rowan freaked out to see Yoon Jang's middle school psycho, Ben Park there. Meanwhile, Eugene bought drinks for everyone and Gray passes a drink to Teddy because he already forgot the feud between them, and then they shared the stories of their bravado. The next day, Teddy and Eugene went to pick up Ko from the vet, and Teddy gifts a bag of cold drinks to him as a thank you gift and Eugene wonders how he is going to finish all of this alone. Meanwhile, a businessman visits Donald Na after Mr. Kang introduced him there, and Donald Na tells him that the purchase rights for transportation and the student council are under his control, so he will not disappoint him. On the other hand, a new name is added to the student's shuttle patch ranking website, and that name is Yoon Jang's White Mamba. At night, when Grape was heading to meet Robin, he hears someone stop him by calling his name, and when he turns back, he was startled to see Wolf Kiem there. Grape gives a file, which Forrest gave to Robin, and tells him to hand it over to Wolf Kiem because both don't want to face Wolf. The ill-fated relationship between Hyung Shin and Gang Hak is not limited to Grape and his middle school classmate Wolf. In the past, Forrest was helplessly beaten by Wolf because he stared at him for three seconds, which became Wolf's three-second rule. Back that day, Grape went to meet Robin, and he was trying to contact him when Scorpion told him that Robin had gone to the school's back gate to smoke. While heading toward Robin, Grape thinks that their commissions will be over after they are asked to hand over the files. Suddenly, Wolf appears with the file in his hand and tells him that he came all the way here to pick up the files. So why is Robin handing over this file instead of Forrest? He humiliates him for losing to Yoon Jang while showing off the file that he does not need to tell Grape what decision was made during the last Union assembly. A few days ago, during the assembly meeting, Donald Na told everyone that they have to switch to some new companies, which should take little time like the last time, as he was hinting towards Miles. Donald announces that with regards to changing companies, Kingsley will hand over the lists to them. And from now on, Di Hyun will be in charge of Yu Sun, and Gang Hak will be in the order of Hyung Shin. Now Jimmy and Forrest have to report Jake and Wolf every week. 
Forest bears this news quietly because of his failure to Yoon Jang. But Jimmy retaliates that this is unfair to him. Donald warns him that if he says a single word, he'll show him what he can do, and he doesn't have time to deal with Jimmy's problems. Wolf reports to Donald that with the help of Jared's son, he is done with the work for selecting Gang Hack's new president. Donald tells Wolf to bring Jared with him next time because he sounds useful, and tells others to speak only if they have something to contribute to Union's benefit. After leaving the assembly, Jake tells Jimmy he doesn't have to report him and continues things as before. Yoon Jang was a simple problem for Donald to leave to his subordinates while his only mission was to pursue more profit. However, Yoon Jang was rapidly growing beyond anyone's expectations. On the other hand, Rowan joins Yoon Jang, and it's his first day when Gray sees him and remembers that Rowan told him about joining Yoon Jang. Rowan was unusually silent to see Philip in his class. He is pretty well known in the shuttle patch, but he's never seen him fight. However, after seeing Teddy, he felt confident that he knows someone in the class. After school, Rowan and Gray and Eugene walk toward the cram class. Rowan tells them not to wait for him later because he has to hit the PC cafe after the cram class. After that, Rowan and Eugene enter their style and see a gang hack boy doing homework. They instantly realize he is a homework shuttle and Rowan remembers the time they were forced to do others' homework in middle school. After the class, Rowan went to the PC cafe, and he saw some gang hack guys making a lot of noise while a kid was sitting beside them doing homework, and he realized he was the same kid from his cram class. While they were leaving, Rowan thought they seemed normal aside from their dirty mouths. After leaving the PC cafe, they beat that boy when Rowan shows up and asks them why they are harassing him to which one of them politely replies that he must have misunderstood. They were talking and then told the kid to go. After the kid when Rowan leaves, that guy asks him his name, and he tells him that he is Rowan while the guy himself is Jared's son of Ganghack High Student Council. Jared's son is the next candidate for the school's president, so he, along with his friends, gives food as a gift to the teachers to gain their votes in his favor. After leaving the office, he tells his companions to report this to Kingsley, and he'll report Wolf himself. After that, he goes to his class and starts mocking a kid who stood first in the class while two students discuss that he is not a good fighter. He is an opportunist who leeches on the strong people for his gain. Suddenly one of them showed the other the equation contest in the first rank exercise book, and he thought the answer might be Donald Na. But the other one was realistic because the answer might be someone with a similar name. Meanwhile, Wolf tells Jared that he got to get a commission from Hyung Shin and manage them, and Jared should take care of the rest. After cutting the phone, he wonders if they are getting this much commission from Hyung Shin and how much Donald Na is getting. However, Jared is also amazed by how Donald Na created this system with money, power, and bond with different parties. On the other hand, Donald, while munching, remembers the time of his childhood when he stole bread from a bakery after breaking its door. Suddenly Kingsley comes to talk to him but realizes he has zoned out. Once, Wolf was chilling in a pub when he went to use the bathroom. There were three guys there, and one of them remembered. He had seen Wolf on a motorbike at Dorham Cross Road and asked his friend does this pub accept high schoolers now and today's kids got no manner. While Wolf listens to all this, he washes his hands, removes his glasses, and locks the door. Meanwhile, the same guy tries to warn him that he doesn't know who he is. Without knowing his name, Wolf starts bashing him badly while the other two get chills and freeze there. Wolf then takes his glasses and leaves from there. However, on the bus, two kids from Yoon Jang were discussing how Wolf bashed Chad won who is from Giro Technical High and is the king of Giro, and there is also news that Wolf is going to rip apart Ben. The bus stops at the Yoon Jang school stop, and Alex comes out behind them. He heard their conversation and got worried about Ben. Alex meets Ben on the ground while he is working out, and Ben tells him that he heard Gerard is going to tell Fortune today. Meanwhile, Gerard, with the cards laid in front of him, asks Rowan to pick a card. Rowan picks a card and shows it to Gerard. After reading the card, Gerard tells him that he will be the center of attention and that his life will not be easy in Yoon Jang. Suddenly he receives a text and leaves, saying he has to read for Ben and Alex. Rowan starts bragging about the fighting techniques, and while listening to his non-stop talking, Eugene feels that a storm is coming because he read a comment of Wolf replying to someone on the shuttle patch that if he brings Ben to gang hack, he'll kill him. After knowing what he did to Chad One and that it was not planned Yoon Jang felt scared. Meanwhile, Rowan returns to his class, and when he tries to talk to Teddy, he ignores him. When Rowan asks Teddy why he is ignoring him, Chad comes to him and warns him that no one is allowed to talk to Teddy, to which Rowan tells him that. 
He is the one who crushed Hyung Shin and Nor Yong Jin and he should not mess with him as he is the Sydney guillotine. However, Philip gets irritated by his talking and glares at him, making him wonder whether he should show them what he got or keep his cool. Meanwhile, Ben hangs around in Gray's class and gifts him a milk pack when Rowan arrives. Ben asks him what's wrong with his long face, and Eugene says this is because he is in class 1. Rowan says that Philip is in complete control of the class, and all of them are weird. Ben motivates him, saying that he heard how he fought that day with his elbow. He should show them what he's got, and he can become the number one in his class. Suddenly, Alex calls Ben to play soccer, and he leaves. Rowan felt happy after being approved by Ben. However, Gray suggests Rowan focus on his studies and avoid anything foolish. Philip knew that Rowan was bluffing because he also used bluffing to rise to the top in middle school. When Rowan returns to his class, Philip stops him and asks him what he is bluffing about. While Rowan imagined attacking Philip, he held him by his neck and remembered the posts of Philip's wrongdoings he read online. At that moment, his imagination turned into fear. During the break, while Eugene was taking his lunch, he accidentally bumped into Philip. He flips his tray towards Eugene and turns to get a new one. When Eugene looked back, he was shocked that Gray was standing behind him with food all over his clothes. Gray stops Philip and tells him to come back and clean this. Philip tells him he is not in the mood to mess with him and to ask his mom to clean this. Gray furiously yells at him to come back and clean this. Everyone was certain about Philip's place in Yoon Jang and was sure he would win this situation. After winning over Rowan, Philip thinks he can easily crush Gray through his words and starts mocking him that he is nothing without his weapon. However, after listening to this, Gray hits his jaw with the elbow technique Rowan always used to brag about. Everyone was shocked, and Gray ensured he never looked him in the eye and kicked him down. That's the day when Yoon Jang's white mamba, Gray Yoon, finally rose above the surface. After playing soccer, Ben and Alex went to Gray's class, and after seeing he had not returned from lunch, he started checking Gray's notes and thought about how a brilliant student like him ended up in Yoon Jang. Alex tells Ben that Gerard is calling them to the rooftop and they should drag Gray along. Meanwhile, Eugene and Gray return from the canteen, and Eugene tells them Gray knocked Philip out in the cafeteria. Ben gets excited, says they want to hear the whole story in detail, and asks them to go to the rooftop and talk there, but Gray refuses with a sad face and heads towards the class. They all felt his sadness, and Alex suggested Ben talk with Gray because he is good at counseling and he is the one who spoke Alex out of his moody adolescence. Meanwhile, in Ganghak, head of school affairs, Arthur son is Jared's uncle and he gives him the answer key for the main subjects, which he also uses to get money from selling it. However, during the cram class, Gray receives a text from Ben telling him to meet him at Master Arcade in front of his cram school. Jared went to a coffee shop to meet the gang hack students to sell the answer key. They ask him how much money he wants, but he refuses to take money, saying that there is something he wants them to do for him instead. While waiting for Gray, Ben started playing the game but lost miserably. Meanwhile, Gray arrives, calls him Big Ben, steps aside and starts playing the game. Ben was amazed by his gaming techniques and asked him to teach him some moves to beat Gogo in the game. Ben used to call Alex Gogo sometimes. Then he took Gray to a chicken shop and ordered a whole fried chicken. After eating the chicken, Ben tells Gray that all of them are worried about him and that if he wants, he can talk to him and relieve his burden. After a long silence, that was the first time Gray told Big Ben about his story, and Ben quietly listened to Gray. Everything started to make sense to Ben, all he did was kept listening quietly, but Gray felt somehow relieved. A few days later, Ben takes Alex and Gerard to the Yoon Jang's annex building which has been abandoned for quite a while, and shows them a room in the basement. He tells them since Gray doesn't like rooftops so he searched this new hideout for them. On the other hand, Philip started behaving rowdier than ever because he knew if he stayed quiet, people would start questioning his authority, and he'll lose his power. Philip's action awakens the devil in Teddy, and he asks Rowan if it is true that he smashed Helmet. He tells him that Philip is ruining the class's atmosphere, and honestly speaking, he has never seen him fight against anyone one-on-one. -on -one. Teddy thinks he can win against Philip, and Philip might back off before the fight starts, but the problem is his underlings. He tells Rowan that let's take over the class and start creating Philip, which offends him, and he warns him to stop staring at him. Teddy took his pony off and started heading towards Philip while Rowan stopped his underlings from moving. Teddy gets up on Philip's desk, sits in front of him, and asks him if he wants to fight with him. Philip gets scared and tells Teddy that he is insane. As Teddy predicted, even though he was provoking Philip, he was not making any move. After a brief silence, Teddy decides to take action, grabs Philip's shoulder, and pretends he will punch him firmly. Philip got terrified because he had seen Teddy fighting his opponents insanely. 
At that moment, the game is over for Philip. Teddy stops and mocks Philip that he is just a shit talker and tells Chad he'll see him in front of the incinerator. Teddy utterly impressed Rowan while Philip's sand castle crumbled into dust. After Gray's spectacular performance in the cafeteria, a weird rumor spread that White Mamba had taken over Yoon Jang and some Yoon Jang students started bullying middle school students using this rumor. On the other hand, Wolf was beating the hell out of his underlings because they got robbed by some guys, but then he decided to give them a chance to bring back the money or those thieves, and if they cannot do either of those, he will kill them. While Eugene and Gray are heading for their cram classes, Eugene feels relieved that Gray seems in a better mood now and he also realizes that he doesn't get to see Rowan these days. On the contrary, Jimmy was working out like crazy after being humiliated by Donald Na because of Ben. Hugo Yoon and a kid were watching Jimmy working out and told him he'd be dead if someone tried to mess with Jimmy now. Hugo tells him that Jimmy was famous for being a devil in middle school and starts telling him that once Jack picked a fight with Jimmy in middle school, Meanwhile, the bell rings, and he leaves the story in between and runs toward the class. The next day, Gray and Eugene meet Rowan at the cram school, and while Eugene and Rowan are going to their class, Eugene notices Rowan's bag and asks him that did he bought a new bag. Rowan tells him this is not his bag because a girl ripped his bag and lent him her bag on the condition that she'll get him the same one. However, Eugene didn't believe him, but Rowan, while having flashbacks of what that girl did, couldn't think why she did that. Rowan remembers that after getting used textbooks from the cram school's textbook collector, he was heading towards the class, thinking that Philip would not cause a ruckus now and he'll focus on his studies. After entering the course, he is startled to see his bag ripped apart by a girl, and when he questions her about this, she replies that his bag is the same as someone she hates, and apologizes to him for doing so. She lends him her bag and tells him to take care of it until she gets him a new one. She also took his number while leaving, and Rowan couldn't understand what had just happened. Rowan thinks whatever is happening is just like what Gerard predicted about him. Meanwhile, Gray is studying at home when he remembers Ben gave him a resistance band to gain physical strength because he might get in trouble in the future and also shows him how to use it. So Gray starts acting upon his advice. While Alex was running to the basement to get his phone, which he had dropped earlier in the basement while he was there with Ben, he heard Gerard singing and playing guitar after reaching there. Gerard played so well that he got goosebumps and wondered who Geard was. At some time, the gang hack boys who got beaten by Wolf were discussing that they got robbed by Yoon Jang, and they didn't tell about this to Wolf because he would have killed them, besides they have not seen their faces. One of them heard that Yoon Jang's white mamba and his minions were messing around and thought it might be the ones who robbed them. So, they decided to roam around Noryong Jin to gather some clues. Meanwhile, the teacher announces that Jared stood first in the exam, is rewarded with a scholarship, and tells other students to learn from him. On the other hand, Eugene remembers Ben showing him their new hideout place and telling him to bring Gray, so he tells Gray that Ben is calling him to the annex building. Eugene takes him to the annex, and when he gets in, all the guys are already waiting for him. Gray was amazed to see that place and thought it was pretty cool. When Gerard was leaving, Alex remembered that he kept glancing at the guitar the whole time, but he didn't know why Gerard was not telling them about this. While Gray and others are heading towards his class, Gray hears boys talking about the white mamba, and he freezes there. 